first things first and news that I'm obviously ecstatic about and over the moon and really happy jumping up and down inside clapping my hands above my head whilst I yell yeah, whilst I yell yilly 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 is this news courtesy of the Evening Standard exclusive now let's dance clubs to reopen with no COVID tests or vaccine passports health checks are too much hassle and no exception for July 19th lifting do you know how amazing that is no COVID vaccine passports needed no tests needed in order to kind of go back onto the dance floor and do what we know we do best it's so so amazing and to be honest big ups to all the kids that are under what 25 and stuff that went out in record numbers to get vaccinated i was really surprised to be honest especially when you consider how um you know how flipping what was that thing called especially when you consider that the virus doesn't really affect people as much that are to kind of occupy that age range that then kind of you know their willingness to go out and get vaccinated just because they want to get back to normal is amazing or just take one for the team just because they knew that you know maybe deep down if they don't do so it's going to prevent them from maybe going back onto campuses and all this stuff i don't know what happened but regardless i was just surprised to see so many young people take up um you know the vaccine and make sure that they get all double dosed up in order to make sure things open up in record time and i think that definitely had a large part to play in things going as well as they have been now because you know for for the most part who's going to be out at these dance floors in their kind of hundreds and thousands especially in the opening weekends definitely mostly younger people so definitely good to see that way it continues here it says nightclubs and music venues will reopen without people having to take covid tests or show vaccine passport from july 19th in a major boost to london's west end and nighttime economy the standard has learned michael gove the cabinet minister leading review it's understood to believe he it would impose too much hassle on the public and businesses to require tests for night dancing. Government sources said we're increasingly confident that people are protected and the plan is to reopen everything with no exception. Brilliant. And that's how it should have always been, to be honest. I think the idea of getting, maybe the idea of a COVID passport made more sense in, as opposed to, you know, uh, re, imploring or basically demanding clubs to do some sort of rapid lateral flow testing whatever it may be ahead of time or at the door i think the COVID passport maybe would have worked a little bit more but still the idea of kind of mandating people to have a covid passport to prove that they're vaccinated or to go to a dance floor to be liberated to dance around people from their community or to just let go and to kind of tap out from society just never really sat right with me and i think a lot of people in new york who have kind of going through it now at the moment are kind of struggling with this sort of like like, um, you know, tension, this sort of war inside, right, where at one point you're using nightlife and the dance floor as the great equalizer as a way to kind of, you know, strip down all in inequalities and get people you know dancing under one roof under one vision under one light and blood all these kind of liberal principles but then on the one side you also have this draconian um you know somewhat fascist sort of ideal where you're kind of making sure people that enter your place have to make sure that they have a you know medical certification that proves that they got a vaccine that a lot of people are dubious on its kind of benefits um in the world in general it's kind of a really weird place to be if you're a club owner in it or if you're just a promoter of nights in general where you kind of sit on that thing in general but hey i think in the uk for the most part i think most people have been kind of i wouldn't say growing up is probably the best way to put it i think we've just kind of been growing up we've been like you know what i may have some real philosophical or ideological um opposition towards this virus or towards, or towards the virus and towards the vaccine in general but i'm willing to take the the hit for the team just to go i can get back to doing what i love and i think if you're an entertainer or you're somebody that works within whatever field it may be you're just going to need to get vaccinated just so you can do your job and that's generally the only real stipulation that it comes down to it's less so about a government mandate and more so you having the ability to make sure that you can put food in your table and put clothes on your back in it and if you can do so now without having a vaccine and it's a double win but i think prior everyone that got it beforehand i definitely understood why especially the ones that went out and did you know dj gigs in some of the you know more just let's say third world countries like the parts of asia you know parts of central america south america again i don't judge and it is what it is i get it let's continue 
The verdict was held as a godsend by leaders in the nighttime sector, which is worth an estimated 40 billion of the added value in London's economy. Simon Thomas, a chief executive of the Hippodrome Casino in Leicester Square, said this would be a godsend to the nighttime economy so that we can relaunch central London to a global audience. It's time to get on with life, live with this virus as we've lived with it before. But I wonder, this is sometimes I wonder how these places even function. Who do you think? I would imagine the majority, again, I don't go to casinos, I'm not really a lesser square goer outer, but I would imagine the majority of people that go to the Hippodrome Casino in Leicester Square have to be tourists, right? So without tourism, especially mass tourism now, because, you know, there's not a lot of, you know, major, I guess, European markets that are on the green list, which basically allow people to come into the United Kingdom without having to quarantine or whatnot and just show basically a negative test, I think, or get or show that they got a vaccine. Without that, who's really attending these places? That's what sometimes I think, I wonder if some of these venues are just weird kind of fronts for money laundering, because imagine how you can survive as a casino, right? Which basically needs people in real life to attend. You can't actually somehow launch a live streaming casino for, i don't know whatever right you need people to kind of step forth in your establishment and you'd imagine one per presumably based in leicester square would need a high amount of foot flow to make it work especially with the amount of staff that they have to employ and the, just the rent alone is just going to be obscene so without it like what's the how does it exist what's the point how does it exist i'm really curious but anyway it continues it says it follows the success of the vaccination program in breaking the link between cases and fatalities and pilot schemes including one at a nightclub that showed that no substantial upgrades and strong compliance with mitigating measures which is interesting to find out too because i think a lot of people who are arguing about reopening the economy you know before christmas were arguing this so basically saying you know like there's no there's no more danger to go into a club than going to a supermarket but i guess for some reason the government didn't want to just be up front and say hey we're not not closing these because i think that would have been nice to hear that he just said hey we're not not opening clubs because we don't think it's safe we're just doing it because this is the only way we're going to get in mass compliance right because if everything's if everything's kind of semi-open there is no real need for people to wear masks and open people to social distance and they'll probably think it's over right so you kind of want to give it's sort of like you kind of want to tell people what to do without telling them what to do directly so you do it indirectly by putting forth these measures and these limits and whatnot and what people can do and freedom of movement that basically make it impossible for you to break the rules or make it more hassle than it's worth you know look at the fines thing that hancock and stuff in, imposed right all those things were basically deterrents and i guess that's what the truth of it was because it wasn't a science thing it wasn't a cases do this and this and that it was just more so about hey we just think if we have to pick the worst of the evils that exist there, people need to shop, people need to kind of make sure that they're able to eat and drink and whatnot. So we're going to keep the supermarkets open. You know, there was no real limit in terms of supermarkets prior to the new year. It feels like everyone kind of went and did what they wanted. But then when it comes to clubs, we're going to just let that, you know, kind of put down ice for now because we don't want to give people the impression that we're over it when we're not really over it. Or we don't want to give people the impression that they can go out and just live their life as normal because they can't. Right? I don't know. It, it felt like it was a it was purposely done that way. If they just would have been honest about it, I think there would have been a lot more understanding in a nighttime economy kind of thing of people who I've seen online who are complaining a lot about the lockdowns. It was more so because of the lies. It was more so about the you know the misdirection. This idea that somehow one thing was worse than the other when really they were all kind of on the same sort of playing field. But hey, we are where we are. It continues, said Michael Kill, chief executive of Nighttime Industries Associations, has said smaller nightclubs in particular would lose trade to pubs and restaurants if they were singled out for mandatory tests yeah that couldn't happen it says here if you're in a night if you're in a late night pub and thinking of going out to a club around the corner there's a good chance that having a take a test would make you question whether to bother very true you know it would be awesome too if they did if they somehow increased the hours opening hours of clubs in general because if there's one thing that's really annoying about london is that if you do go to a pub and you want to go to a club afterwards you kind of have to decide very quickly you have only between the hours of like what 10 to 2 to decide if you need to go to a club because more often than not the clubs are either going to close before 2 or they're going to close before 4 so there is no real chance to kind of do what you would maybe do let's say in a berlin where you can go to a bar or a pub until you know one in the morning and then decide to go to a nightclub and then go home 
But then what that does, even though it sounds insane, is that it makes you pace yourself a lot better. Because what happens in the London pubs, or especially the ones I go to, more than not, they have these drink specials that they do before the hours of like, let's say, 7 to 9 p.m. Because I know a lot of people don't want to come out before then because it's too early. So then you end up getting there early to get those drink stills in you. You other friends who don't want to come early meet you later. And then by the time you leave, you've probably got a good part of like what, fifty pounds worth of pub drinks in you. And fifty pounds worth of pub drinks is far more alcohol than you would get in the club. And then by the time you get into a club, you're already off your head. And it's just, you know, by the time you take whatever else you need to take inside of a nightclub to get on it, it's just a whole madness affair. So it would be great, especially for the opening weekend or so, to have the government baby allow clubs to reopen for a longer period of time and maybe just give everyone a late license and allow them to open until 6 a.m or something that would be so beneficial it would help to kind of spread out the workload spread out the demand uh, make sure people aren't getting sloppy and stuff and just make things a little bit more safe that's the one thing that you do see a lot you do see a lot of unsafe partying out here in london people just getting super wasted super quickly because they just have to because you know there's a time limit on how long they can be outside for continues here says in further developments as the country heads to war stage four the road map out of lockdown vaccine passports formerly called as covid status certificates will not be mandatory for festivals and sporting events this summer would organize that the premier league may choose to adopt them okay um britain's going abroad may um be able to use any chase type as a vaccine passport a new health secretary sajid sajid javid is reported to be looking at integrating the uk apple the eu green pass system which is great i think that's going to be definitely beneficial for someone like myself who wants to go on my little tech in the weekends it continues it says people who have had two vaccine doses i may no longer have to isolate for 10 days after close contact with a covid carrier awesome under plan to be considered they would have to take a daily lateral flow test for 10 days and be allowed to uh, and be allowed out if they test negative it says here ministers are keeping an open option to the test of vaccines and passports and vitality and entertainment this winter but only if the surge in infections threatens christmas openings conservatives mps are pressing the government hard to ditch the passports mr harper chair of the recovery group of mps told the standard with so many people receiving protection from the vaccine justification of the covid state certificates is incredibly weak tests may still be asked by some organizers of mass gathering such as large events or sporting fixtures something tests and passports could boast consumer confidence in both ticket if purchases yeah that's something as well that i'm kind of a little bit i've said already in previous times that i'm a little bit dubious about this idea that it's going to be the roaring 20s and people are going to be going out in droves and places i think there's going to be a few people don't get me wrong who are definitely going to be going out opening weekends but i think for the most part the large majority of crowds will probably stay away until they kind of get an idea on what the kind of climate is and if it's safe or not not what not bloody blah 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 so for sure i assume there will be a, a kind of section of the population that will be um somewhat encouraged if organizers do go out of their way to say hey in order to attend this place to get entry you have to kind of test negative and also have a covid passport for sure there'll be some that would have that um you know stipulation in mind but i think if they're able to maybe leave it as a case by as a kind of organizer by organizer basis like you decide if you want to you know give your customers a greater sense of safety to kind of impose the need to have covid passports or tests involved fair enough and then you decide yourself as a free citizen whether or not you want to go to something like that if it kind of jives with what you're into and whatnot that's cool but mandating across the board is just something i've never really been a fan of so it's definitely good to see this going forward and again july 19th can't come any sooner Sooner. only a few more weeks to go i'm in a gym i'm working out getting myself nice and healthy and nice and fit and ready to go back on dance floor it's going to be a it's going to be a, it's going to take some getting used to to be on a dance floor for a prolonged period of time dancing hearing loud music is going to take some getting used to too so make sure you get your earplugs and all that stuff needed and let's get back out there raving doing what we know best